So now in this video, we're going to look at the 7407 integrated circuit. This is the 74LS07, so low power shaki. I got it from this kit right there, 74LS07. And we got that kit. I also have the HC kit, high speed CMOS kit. It does not have a 7407. The 7407 has six buffers. There's a little star there though. That means it's open collector. We'll get to that a little bit later. In addition, when you check the data sheet of the 07, it's a high voltage output. You actually use a separate power supply to provide the high signal at the output. So outputs there. You can use a higher voltage than the five volts that the integrated circuit depends on at uh, the output. So it provides the uh, positive voltage and the output either goes to ground or it turns off. That's what open collector means. So now the main property of buffers in general is that what you input, if you input a high signal about five volts, you'll get five volts out. In this case, using a five volt power supply. If you input zero volts, a low signal, you'll get zero volts out. It will connect to ground. What's the point of that is that you can power something without that influencing the signal coming in. The power supplies provide the power, not the signal. So now let's actually get to the circuit. We're only using this top buffer. These other ones are, we're not going to use. We don't want to leave the inputs floating though according to the data sheet. So what we're doing is wherever there is an input we're not using, we're putting directly to the positive rail. That prevents the transistors from picking up stray signals and stuff and doing stuff internally. It locks it to the positive rail. You could also put it directly to the negative rail, the unused inputs. The circuit has a trim pot for an input. We'll come to that in a little bit. The load. We need actually to pull up the voltage to the output. It does not provide a positive output. The LED here, we're going to put to the positive rail, the long lead, the anode. Short lead, the cathode, are going to go down one row to that resistor. This is a 3 kilo ohm resistor. We could use a lower value resistor with the 5 volts that we're going to use, but we're going to up the voltage later on. We'll look at that. Not with this power supply. This integrated circuit should only be 5 volts. But since this is open collector, we can attach another power supply. Since it's high voltage, that voltage can actually be higher. We'll look at that later. So we got the trim pot. It's a resistor. There's a tap on there, a wiper. You can get a fraction of the power supply voltage. That's what a voltage divider is. That goes to the top pin, the input. So we have high there and uh, it's off. So there's a high voltage there. It's actually being pulled up by the LED and the resistor. As I said, the integrated circuit outputs do not provide a high voltage. At this point here, you see that uh, we go lower, the LED turns on, higher it turns off, it flickers a bit. This is not a Schmidt trigger input. So we go to the negative rail. We got a low input. That's a higher voltage there, so this is low. Connects directly to ground. The LED is on. So the output is actually low now, even though the LED is on. Now the output's high because we're pulling up the voltage, but uh, still, the output's high because the voltage is higher than the point where it switches to uh, low, right there. So high input, high output, low input, low uh, output. Pretty straightforward. So now one of the advantages of the open collector is that you can provide power from another power supply, in this case through a load or to provide the signal for another load, the high signal. So. We're going to uh, zoom in. The power of that power supply is off. But we're going to zoom in to get a little better look. What we're going to do, pluck the uh, positive jumper there. The black alligator clip coming from that power supply, we put to ground. So the grounds are uh, tied together, the negative rails of the two power supplies. So that's the return path, no matter what. This will go through the uh, breadboard power supply, that uh, ground connection there. Ground is connected together through the uh, power supply as well the uh, breadboard power supply. So we got positive there. We're going to go to the anode of the LED right there. Power supply is off and we got it on. So the open collector, any open collector, you can do this. The other power supply or open drain if it's another transistor type. Five volts. 
no problem. Since this is a high voltage output version, so all the 07 should be, but uh, you gotta check the data sheet of the part number. Make sure it's a high voltage output before you do this. That's a three kilo ohm resistor, 3000 ohm resistor. And you're gonna see, I can up the voltage. The integrated circuit is doing just fine. Right there, so it can handle a higher voltage because it's a high voltage output right there so you gotta check the data sheet make sure that uh, first it is an open collector for the second power supply and then that it's a high voltage output to step up the voltage according to the data sheet it's uh, 30 volts but I think that's absolute maximum so I feel safe with 20 volts with a 3 kilo ohm resistor protecting the LED and so that's it. I always make sure, or I try to always make sure to turn the voltage back down because usually I work with 5 volts these days. And uh, so if I wire something up, I might forget that I had it at 20 volts. So we're back to 5 volts. In any case, don't go by the information you get from other people. Always check the data sheet before you start using integrated circuits. It's kind of flickering because if you bounce around the power supply, it, it flickers. But in any case, always check the data sheet. And uh, check out these other videos that I am posting. Make sure you click subscribe and the bell so you get updates. I will see you in the next video.